Hello, this is the CF Jumpstart Podcast. This is the place where we defrost the windshield of your children's ministry <laughs> so you can see clearly. I'm Dan Mateer. I'm Brent Colby. This is Season 3, Episode 2 of the Jumpstart Podcast. And we're excited today because we're going to be talking about a very important topic for children's ministry leaders, closing the volunteer gap. Yes, closing the volunteer gap. Guys, yeah, it's good to, that gap. You do. It's good to see you, everybody again. It's been a while. I, I want to let you know, on our CM Jumpstart Podcast channel, we just had a leadership event called Fusion, and in it we had 20 different labs of different leaders talking about a variety of topics, stuff relevant for your volunteers, if you're um, a lead pastor on staff at a church, if you're just helping, you know, even in your creative department serving in your church. All those videos are slowly but surely making their way onto our channel. So we've been busy putting those together. So there's a lot of content for you to click through. Some of the stuff is really great and worth your time. So yeah. be sure to check that out on our channel as well. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. And hey, uh, Brent, I got I to gotta mention this. You got something cool this week. I did. Okay, so I'm kind of a geek and I'm a big technology fan. And of all my favorite companies, I really like Google. I follow a lot what they do. And a while ago, they announced an Explorer program for one of the products. Yes. And I've been involved in a lot of beta Google stuff, so trying it out. And they have some offices here in Seattle. I've been able to go in and test out some of their stuff on occasion, which I, I find just fascinating. But I got an invite to try something. Thing, a little unique and in fact I have it right behind me here this is uh, the Google glasses and uh, it's very geeky I, I love it <laughs> see him jump start when just went high tech okay this. here's one cool thing of okay. all the things it does one thing that it can do is take a video and I think what I should be able to do okay we're recording a video now and what I might be able to do after the fact is to Patch this in. So what I look at <laughs> is what you see. Isaiah, Isaiah, go ahead. We can give us a wave because you'll be on. You'll be starring. And you kind of <laughs> see our office and our bright light set up here. So yeah, it's cool. That's you awesome. can um, make phone calls, get directions, look up stuff. You can watch Sam Jumpstart videos watch in, in your peripheral all day. You could. Lucky. So it's been fun. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep them or not, but it's been fun to check out and. Um, the the looks you get from people wearing these around range from like disgust <laughs> to yeah. like real like what is that to geeky friends will be like in awe like oh he's got the cool Google glasses yeah. but um, it's a little hard to wear around because it feels a little bit like a uh, hey look at me sort of accessory maybe. I don't know. But you're I can't not gonna. Comment. You're it's not pretty gonna cool. It's pretty cool. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. I can't wait to see the uh, video patched in. You know, you've also done some uh, uh, some reading recently. I did. Um, finishing up. In fact, pretty soon I'll be able to post my top ten books of 2013, which is yeah. always one of my favorite yeah. posts of the year. But one of them that may or may not make the list, just to leave a little tension there, is a book. Um, called Think Like a Futurist. Okay. And I, I got this book. It was pretty well reviewed. I was a little skeptical because I don't know if you've read a lot of like futurist type thinkers, but a lot of it's real pie in the sky, very abstract stuff, which is often entertaining, but not very insightful. Okay. Um, and so I picked up this book here by um, Cicely Summers, and she had just a great way to not just um, look at past trends, current trends, and predict future trends. Because that's typically what you get when you listen to somebody's talk or things like that. But she identified some qualities that make up the trends. And so just kind of looking at it at a deeper level, she gives, and they're just right here, governance, demographics, technology, and resources. And she says those four things create trends. And so if you take a close look at those four things, then you can better predict what type hmm. of trends those current realities are shaping going forward. I found it, you know, I was, like I said, skeptical at first. Towards the end, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is well worth it. In fact, I've set aside several hours just to process some of her ideas and to try to identify some potential trends wow. in children's ministry kind of going forward. It was definitely interesting and definitely worth a read. Sweet. I'll have to uh, put it on hold of the library. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, closing the volunteer gap. I, I've been in children's ministry a few years, and, and this time of year I've learned out of habit, no one wants to be, no one wants to volunteer. It's now mid-December. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks they're too busy. Everyone is too busy. The thought of getting involved in something new is the farthest thing from their mind. But in just a couple of weeks, as soon as we turn the page to January 1st, the whole calendar clears, and it seems like scores of people all of a sudden realize, 
I should be serving. I just made a New Year's resolution. I've got lots of extra time after the holidays. So we as leaders need to be ready to receive and integrate these people. So how do we do that? How do we close the gap from I want to volunteer to I am volunteering? And I think pretty much any time you get a group of children's pastors together, how do you get volunteers? surfaces right towards the top absolutely fewer ministries if not no ministries in your church need more people yeah. use more people on a regular basis I, I mean the children's pastor probably has more contact with people in the church especially people serving in the yeah. church than any other pastor right i mean um you know it's very unique in that so the the role of volunteering and having a good philosophy or strategy to approach volunteers is essential in any children's ministry. Absolutely. Absolutely. You had a, a story you were sharing earlier about uh, maybe some of the pain of closing <sighs> the gap on volunteers. I had an experience that I think many can empathize with yeah. where uh, I had a big event coming up and I had uh, go ahead and, and written out all the job descriptions of all the things I needed done and had contacted people to fill each of those positions and it was like two months back and I felt very good about it so I put it to the side I just had checked it off my list and I continued working on the event. When it came time to call and confirm all those people and to call a meeting with them to kind of have a pre-meeting for the event, half of them were not on board. Ugh. And I was just devastated because I was like, you, you said you were... People you, you were already counting on. I, you, were, you were on the list. Yeah. And on my list, they were. They were written down and had confirmed right next to them. But somewhere between me... Uh, making that initial contact and me writing it down on my list and me following up with them, I was not on the same page with those volunteers. Yeah. And I, I called a friend of mine and was just kind of like trying to, to, I was looking for a little sympathy and I got no sympathy. He called me out. He's like, well, you dropped the ball. You didn't set the hook. You didn't close that gap between them wanting and being willing to serve and them actually being invested in on your team. Yeah. So there's a gap there. And I've you know spent a lot of time, because it really stung. So I spent a lot of time kind of thinking about it and just kind of processing yeah. with that. That metaphor you use there, setting the hook, I think most of us would be familiar with that as a fishing metaphor, but I yeah. think just drawing that out, it really helps us understand. You get the fish, and they, they nibble the bait. Right. They may even bite on the hook, but our the job of the fisherman, I'm not a very good fisherman, so maybe I'm not the best <laughs> speaker, is to tug on that and pull the hook through the through the mouth so that the fish can't come off. Yes. That's a little bit of a gross metaphor for, for volunteers, <laughs> but there's something to be done there that... Biting the hook is not enough. Setting the hook needs to take place. Yeah. So what 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 does that look like? I think that's the discussion. We we kind of outlined a model that we both um, follow or you know think is useful as sure. far as volunteers. Yeah. And just kind of three simple things. Step one, you have to recruit, mm -hmm. and we spend a lot of our time recruiting volunteers, and that you know that's a whole topic in and of itself. Yeah. Step two is you have to train those volunteers. They have to feel equipped and ready to go do what you've asked them to do. And step three is to motivate the volunteer. Yeah. You have to continually inspire them over time to stay excited about doing the thing that, that you've asked them to do. And ultimately, the thing that you're helping enable them to do to serve the church. I mean, right. it's a very biblical biblical model of, of getting people in, equipping them to do the ministry, and then sending them out to go do it with passion. You know, something I've been learning now or, or maybe have a bit more perspective on as I'm aging we're all aging but i'm 36 now and I, I, so a lot of the volunteers <laughs> that i'm working with are half my age you know if i'm working with an 18 year old they're right. from a decidedly different generation than i am from or my first few years in children's ministry all my volunteers were 20 years older than me because they were the parents in my church right yeah so i'm working with people who think differently now and i know that uh that you and i've been working with college students and have experienced some frustration as to maybe what commitment looks like to an 18, 19 year old. But um, last month we had a, a good discussion with some college students and one of them um, really opened my eyes to what it means for, let's call them a millennial generation person to commit. And she said something fascinating. It's not that her generation or, or, or her, her peers don't commit. They commit to a lot. They commit to probably more than the previous generations ever would have. But because of that, we need to make sure that it's not that commitment is not viewed as a yes or no. It's viewed as a where does this fall on my priorities? Yeah. Because if I've committed to twenty things, I can only commit my full attention to a few. <clears throat> so how do we as ministry leaders uh, make that ministry commitment rise to the top of the the priorities? And I think what you mentioned with not just recruit and train, but motivate and to continually be saying, hey, this yeah. is this is it needs to be 
to close to the top of your priorities. Yeah, you know, kind of that first, it's almost a cyclical process, right? Yeah. It's not a linear. A lot of times it may start with the motivate and maybe step two, you know, again, I just said it's not linear, but maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe the recruit and motivate are more closely connected than, than we realize yeah. at trying to, at least being aware of that it's one of our assignments is to continually generate that buy-in for yeah. whatever we're doing. Yeah. I, I think... I think your generational comment is is um, really insightful. My grandpa, he will serve the church. Period. He's yeah. committed to that. Yeah. And um, you know, my grandma, she will teach a class or she'll serve on the worship team every single Sunday, every single year because that's what you do. Um, but for her, the church was a, a, a huge part of her life. I mean, it was yeah. like, that, that was her social life, was the church growing up. Yeah. Um, for students today and people growing up in the church today, it's not it's not true, you know? Mm-hmm. For most people, you know, it may sting to admit a little bit, but the church is, is one of many things that they do and not even their primary thing. Yeah. I think a lot of our families may be more committed to their soccer team, their baseball team, than they are to serving at their church. And the question I've always asked along the same lines that you presented here is, how do I get them ex- as excited about what we're doing with children's ministries mm-hmm. as they are about their soccer team? Yeah, and I think that we can paint that in a negative light, but there's even more to it than that that I'm seeing where people are maybe not as committed to our local congregation, but are investing in things like YWAM or Bread of Life Mission or things that are church organizations or parachurch organizations. Yeah. Um, but But... So it's it's not that I think we can paint this picture that oh we've got these evil people that are all about soccer and not about God, but it's not even as simple as that. Right. One thing that I've learned this year though in 2013 as I kind of look back on this this last year is <clears throat> when we go to this we talked about recruit train motivate. There's something that happens at that recruit stage, right? Mm-hmm. There's almost a little bit of magic that happens, <laughs> and it's it's totally true. And I think you and I can look back to when we first got involved. You hit that moment where your your emotional energy spikes. You're going, yes, kids, yes, church, yes. And there's this excitement that's happening, yeah. right? And we're we're excited with you. And that's when you first wrote those people's name down. You, me, yes, let's do <laughs> this it. This is going right? to be awesome. Yeah. One thing I've learned is I've let the burner cool on that too many times. Yeah. That I have this experience with people. And I say, do you want to do this? And they say, yes, it's going to be great. We're going to have this fabulous ministry relationship. And I don't call them for three weeks, right? Yeah. So this is something I've come back to over and over. At that Fusion conference, I talked to it and talked about how it's like dating. And it's like if somebody doesn't get that call, that the emotion fizzles and you go, oh, I don't even remember. Did we like each other? I don't remember. <laughs> So one thing I've done this year is close that gap from will you do this and yes, I'm doing it, try to close that gap as much as I can and from some uh, advice on some other people, uh, close that down to just a few days to go, okay, if you said yes, it's only going to be a few days before we get the, at least get the ball rolling on you being in. Okay, let me ask you this. So people say yes. Yeah. How how are they saying yes? What mechanism do you use? Is it a page? Is it a phone call? What I got they? one word. I got one word that's going to change your life. <laughs> okay, this is good. The word is woo-foo. Woo-foo. Okay. Enough said. Next topic. No, I just <laughs> <laughs> What's woo-foo? These, if you've not used woo-foo, uh, it, it's an online form, right? It's a very simple online form. It's an electronic form. Every yep. children's ministry I know has a form, right? Yes. The problem is that form is a piece of paper that's yes. somewhere in your church, and you put it somewhere. In your Bible, in your bin. Yes, and then the, you put yep. your social security number on it, and you leave it on the desk somewhere. It's... Chaos. I, I, I've said, let's, let's do away with that form and go to WooFoo. So if you want to get involved, you either go to the website, get this email, you somehow get this form. And it's electronics. So there's a lot of different ways it can get it to you. Okay. I could email it to you right now, right? You fill it out, and that buzzes back as a text message to me, oh, right? Okay. Or And an email. Okay. So I've got it back right now. So wherever I am, I know, okay, it's 3.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday, I know you're interested in volunteering right now. Why? Because you just filled out that form. So I call you right now. That simple change revolutionized the relationship. So you have removed the paper red, the paper sign-up form. Paper takes too long. Is there resistance to people who don't um, 
want to sign up, say they're dropping their kids off on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. what we would do traditionally is say, hey, here's a, do you want to volunteer? We'd love to have you. Oh, yeah, we, we could do that. Here's a form, fill it out during church and give it back. Sure. Do you do something instead of that? Or is that part of uh, your... I, you know what I did? Your woofu kung fu. My woofu kung fu has tried to address that. I, I think there's still some... We still have a paper form so that if you wanted to fill it out right now, I could I could stand by and do that. Uh, we just made a QR code that goes to the woofu form. Uh, now, if you don't do QR codes... That, 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 that's a miss, but we put it in the bulletin for our recruiting. We put it on our little volunteer thing so that you scan it and you do it right now. I had people fill out the Wufu form during church. Yeah. And I know you fill it out during church. I, <laughs> I got it. Right. Yeah. Uh, my, my form, though, just to, to make it clear, is only a five-question form. I yeah. just go, who, who are you? What's your best contact information? Where, when do you want to serve? All the other things I'm going to ask you later. So that so you you create that that right that first step. Yeah. You make a baby step. Baby step. You're not getting social security numbers, background checks, reference forms. You're no. just saying, hey, get in the door and then we'll... Yeah. Because in my in my mind, as we talk about set the hook, what I want to do is to set the hook while you're still excited, yeah. while you're still hungry for the bait, right? It sounds so <laughs> crass. <laughs> talk about, yeah, we're going to... But it's true. To say, okay, are you excited? I don't want to diminish your excitement as a volunteer by asking for your last five churches and three personal references and the date of your baptism and... and right. Your, that stuff confirmation can, papers. Right. Yeah. That stuff can suck your excitement. I still want to do that, but I can do that in process after yeah, we've said that. That's good. Out. So then what 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 have you found is a good gap? So so you you recruit, you make it easy for them to, yeah. to sign up. Yeah. You follow up immediately. Yeah. And then what how much time do you put between getting them on board and starting to train them? Because yeah. To me, that's another question people have. Do I train on demand? Do I do quarterly trainings? Do we do a once a month? Like, how have you guys sorted we, that out? Yeah, we do um, uh, our first step of training. We call an orientation. Okay. So that uh, ideally, no more than um, six days after you've said yes, we've scheduled that orientation. So the week. So if I if I woofu you, if you woofu me on Sunday. I will have. I will be oriented. Hopefully that week. Yeah. Hopefully the idea would be before the next church service that we have. Now that's on you too to make sure you're available. Right. And not everybody is. But that you would. Your training is you just sit in on the class, right? And I try to make that not really a training, not scary. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna orient you. We're gonna show you what volunteers do. But that's training. Right. To to push it back to a quarterly training. Uh. Yeah. It was too. The the um. The emotion had cooled too much. Yeah. So I noticed some trends here. Yeah. You make it easy and accessible and you make it happen quick. Immediate, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's good. That's really good. How do you guys address the the motivate? Now, I understand following up immediately, training immediately, those are motivational tools because you're striking while the iron's hot, right? Yeah. Um, For the volunteer who's been a part of your ministry for six months, and then further six months, or that first year, what yeah. elements are there to keep them excited about what they're doing, serving in the church? I wish I wish I could say, uh, hey, I've got it, uh, and here's the, the, the plan. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you what my strategy is, and I think if we were good at this, we would be a, a, on point. Uh, I try to communicate this, and actually Mel Ming uh, is who I got this from, uh, leader here in our network. Um, uh, if you imagine that everybody sits at a table, a round table, yep. uh, and we all sat at those, especially in church, we all have like a, a bunch of them. Oh yeah. And at your table is the person who motivates you, right? Right. A- and as a leader, at your table are the people who you're responsible for motivating. How many people can you fit around that table? Right. You know how many people you can fit around the table. If yeah. you squeeze and your knees touch each other, you can maybe fit ten. You might be able to fit twelve if the chairs are small. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But eight, ten, that's about as many as you can. So to try to just keep that ratio balanced, that I think is the key to motivation. Because I, I know my mistake is believing that I could successfully motivate forty volunteers. So you getting up front on a Sunday morning and doing this, hey everybody, you know, we love you, we're excited about you, and it's there's volunteers, there's not volunteers. Yeah. You don't think that is like a, a home run. I think for there's a place for that, yeah. but I, I, I try to communicate to my volunteers, I say, my leaders, I say, okay, you eight people, you're the people that I motivate. You, in turn, have your own table of people you motivate, but mm. you need to know that I'm not able to motivate successfully those people. I might be able to encourage them, yeah. but I can't be re- responsible for owning them. So you're intentional about sending out motivators. 
My strategy is to be intentional <laughs> about sending out motivators. Yes. A good strategy would be to send out motivators yes. and not leave it upon yourself solely to motivate your team. Yeah. Because yeah. even if even if um, you're an average sized church, 100, 150 people, yeah. you know, you have, you know, potentially 20 Absolutely. plus volunteers. Sure. sure. And it's not reasonable for you to, at least on a regular basis, go out and have yeah. a touch not point with each healthy. one of those. Yeah. 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 So I like that idea of identifying yeah. people who are capable of motivating. Yeah. People who probably have a good sense of yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So then that limits maybe, uh, you know, if use the 25 number, if yeah. you have five people that you can connect with, yeah. they, you know, they use them to identify, you know, the rest of the team, right. four people each. That That is a reasonable expectation, right. I think. And then those people can be very well cared for, motivated. Their birthdays remembered, their anniversaries yeah. remembered, they're prayed for if they're sick. I, yeah, that's how we try to do it. it the, the idea of leaders, of leaders, of leaders. That's yeah. how Mel would paint that. That's cool. Well, it also makes it not all about you, which, you know, speaks a lot to the longevity yeah. of any ministry. Yeah. So cool. Sweet. Dan, great thoughts. Thanks for sharing and kind of opening up about what you guys do at your church. Yes, I can't wait till next time we can Google Glass each other. I don't know. <laughs> yes, we could. We'll we'll figure something out. Uh, so in the meantime, be looking out uh, for the top ten list of some yeah. books to be reading. Um, we will see you guys very soon. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. We'll catch you at episode three next month. Next chat. So check us out at cmjumpstart.com in the meantime, or go to YouTube and type in CM Jumpstart, and we'll see you there.